everything you need to know if you are moving to the Czech Republic as an EU citizen. Uh, hi guys, my name is Jan and today I'll be talking about uh, the legal requirements for EU citizens to move to the Czech Republic. Uh, EU citizens moving to the Czech Republic or living in the Czech Republic basically have exactly the same rules as Czech citizens. So if you are an EU citizen and you're moving to the Czech Republic, you can live here freely, you can work here freely, you can uh, get employed, you can start your own business, you can study, you can do whatever you want in the same way as Czech citizens can. So that's one of the great advantages of the EU. But there are still some obligations you need to meet or some things you need to do. First of them is uh, mandatory for everyone who is even like traveling here as a tourist. If you come here for two days as a tourist, you need to do it as well. But especially if you're moving here, that's the, the obligation you have. And that's registering with the foreign police. Officially, as an EU citizen, you have to register with the foreign police based on the, the place where you live. So in Prague, there is only one, for example. But if you live in some other cities, you need to go to the one responsible for the, for the city where you live. And so you basically just go there and you need to, within 30 days after your arrival to the Czech Republic, you need to go to the foreign police and like report that you arrived. Uh, if you're staying in a hotel or hostel or some accommodation facility, uh, like dormitories or something, they usually report you on your behalf. So if you come here and as a tourist, for example, and you only stay uh, in Airbnb for two days, you don't really need to go to the foreign police to register yourself because you have been registered by the Airbnb. But if you come here as a tourist for two days, for example, and you stay with your friend, uh, who doesn't have the obligation of reporting you to the foreign police, you should go report yourself. As tourists, no one really does that. Uh, as people move in here, I would say it's like half and half because most people generally don't even know about this obligation. So they kind of ignore it or if they're not aware, about, uh, if they're not aware of it, they just don't do it. Uh, it does not really matter for EU citizens, but you could get fined uh, if you didn't do that. And uh, the Ministry of the Interior or the Foreign Police found out later, you might get fined for that. But besides that, probably not a big trouble in real life. Uh, what do you need to get registered with the Foreign Police? So as I mentioned, you need to get registered with the Foreign Police within 30 days after your arrival as an EU citizen. And what do you need to do? Uh, you go to the foreign police in person. You cannot do it online. You cannot do it like in any other way. You just go in person, take your passport with you, uh, take some kind of uh, health insurance with you. If you're moving here to work, for example, you can get some confirmation from your employer. Uh, if you have the European health insurance card, that can be used as well. Uh, if you don't have anything like that, you should buy a private health insurance, either like a travel health insurance from the country of your origin or uh, a local health insurance. And then you also need to prove that you have somewhere to live. So you should bring some proof of accommodation as well. So your lease agreement, for example, or something similar, like a proof of accommodation form, for example. Then you uh, deliver this to the foreign police. They will take your passport. They will like type into the computer for 15 minutes. They, they will give you the passport back and that's it. You don't get any confirmation. You don't get any stamp into your passport, nothing. Uh, they just put it into the system and that's it. If you want to stay here longer, if you're moving here, meaning that you're not just visiting as a tourist, but if you're moving here for a longer period of time, I would say at least one year or longer, as of now, this is not an obligation, but it will be an obligation from next year. That's at least what the ministry told us when we were meeting them a couple of weeks ago. But so far in 2022, it's not obligatory or mandatory, but it will be anyway. So it's still good to do it now. And it might be useful in some situations as well. Is so-called registration certificate. Uh, that's basically just a piece of paper 
a folded piece of paper, like only half officially looking, saying that you officially reside in the Czech Republic and include some of your personal details, such as your full name, date of birth, and the address where you're staying in the Czech Republic. As mentioned, this is uh, as of uh, September 2022, this is not mandatory, but uh, it should be mandatory from 2023. Uh, but even now, if it's not mandatory, it still might be useful or required in some, some situations. So, for example, if you want to register a car in the Czech Republic, you cannot do it without having the, the registration certificate. Uh, if you want to uh, put your kids into schools or kindergartens, you might need this as well to prove in what part of Prague you live or in what part of the Czech Republic you live, because you usually should put the kid into a school in the place where you live. So uh, in, in random things like that, which you don't really sort out every day, but at some point you might find out yourself in the situation of needing the registration certificate uh, so it's better to get it uh, get it right away because it's not that complicated uh, another thing is that if you plan on staying longer uh, like forever basically or if there is the possibility that you might stay longer of course not many people know that be, uh, when they're moving here but many end up living here for a couple of years uh, so the temporary residency is a first step towards a permanent residency. And then permanent residency is a first step towards uh, citizenship. So also from this perspective, if you see your future in the Czech Republic, it's better to, to get the registration certificate right away instead of waiting for a couple of years because that, that could cost you some, some time in the future. As for how to get the registration certificate, uh, it's issued by the Ministry of the Interior based on the place where you live. So if you live in Prague, then based on what part of Prague you live, you either go to the MOI branch in Prague 6 or in Prague 4 or in Prague 8. If you live in, if you live in Plzeň, you go to the Ministry of the Interior in Plzeň. There is only one place as far as I know. If you live in other parts of the Czech Republic, you go to the local Ministry of the Interior uh, the immigration as an asylum policy um, branch. Uh, the documents you need to collect are not really that complicated if you're kind of lucky. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll go through that uh, right now so you, you get the idea. If you need more info, get in touch or go to our blog, movetoprag.com and uh, the blog section on the website. And we have plenty of articles about this. Uh, I shot some other videos about uh, this topic as well, or simply get in touch and we'll be happy to take care of it completely. Uh, but if you want to do it yourself, technically, it's not that many documents needed, but some of them might be kind of tricky. So let's go through that and I'll explain all this. So first thing is an application form. The application form is both in Czech and English, so you should be able to fill it in. It just should be filled in filled in in Czech. So just be careful about that and fill in all the details they ask about because there are some relations you might not see now. For example, if you don't fill in your mother's maiden name, you might never get the, the Rodne číslo issued and the Rodne číslo might be needed sometime in the, later, uh, in the future. So just fill in all the fields you find there, fill them in. Uh, second, you need your passport or national ID. So if you don't have a passport, but you have a Dutch ID, that's fine. Uh, you need a one passport size photo. So you can get it. Don't get it in the photo booths and metro stations because the quality is not good and the ministry doesn't like them. But if you go to some places like Photo Škoda in the city center, it's completely fine and good. So application form, passport, passport photo, proof of accommodation. That can be your lease agreement, or that can be a special proof of accommodation. One thing to keep in mind is that whatever you give to the ministry, they will never give it back to you. So if you give them your lease agreement, you will never get your lease agreement back uh, because you always need to submit original documents or notarized copies. So you cannot just make a copy at your home printer and give it to the ministry. They will always need to keep a copy, like an official copy from a notary or the original. 
uh yeah of course the the lease must meet some requirements uh like it must be signed by the owner of the property the the flat must be registered as a flat not like atelier or some business space or stuff like that so you need to be kind of lucky if you don't really speak czech or if you don't have education in in real estate or whatever you you haven't read too many czech lease agreements then uh it might be a bit tricky because you kind of rely on the landlord giving you all the documents you need which not all of them really do but if you're lucky this is a simple document as well then you need to have some documents on the purpose of your stay so dep depending on the purpose if you're moving here to work then you need to have an employment contract again original or notarized copy uh if you're moving here for business you should submit uh trade license or the limited liability company you own uh if you move here for studies you could you could submit um admission letter to the next year of the of the school if you're moving here just to live here because you can do that as well as a new citizen then uh you should check in the form you should check ostatni the other as the purpose of your stay but in that case you will also need to buy a uh, local health insurance or if you have of course if you have the european health insurance card you can use that as well but if you don't have any health insurance at the moment you will need to buy a local one the same basically goes for any purpose of stay besides the ones where you make money so besides employment and business uh, then you submit all the documents to the ministry of the interior either you go there or you mail it there and sometimes it's like done on the spot like the same day and they issue the certificate sometimes it can take a couple of weeks uh but eventually you will go back to the ministry of the interior and they will issue this kind of like a folded piece of paper and that's the registration certificate it's valid for 10 years so if you decide to, to stay longer then you can either switch to a permanent residence permit or renew this one and I think that's it.